Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Real Sports Updates here. Back again with another video. So, cut day is here. The Chargers finally got their uh, roster trimmed down to the 53. Um, you know, there was a, a lot of predictable cuts um, that happened. There wasn't too many um, or any really, to, you know, to, to my knowledge that were kind of surprising or that kind of came out of left field. Um, now, this is just speaking specifically for the Chargers. There's a lot of other teams that did have some surprising cuts. Um, there were several names that came across the the, uh, the cut wire that I was um, a little surprised to see. But as far as the Chargers went, you know, this, is, this was pretty much predictable. Um, I predicted this to, you know, after what, the, the second preseason game against the Cowboys, you know, guys weren't really showing anything, right? They were just you know, camp bodies and, you know, we're, we're not, you know, really moving the needle and not really separating themselves. And I said in that the, the post game live stream that I did um, after the Chargers played the Cowboys week two of the preseason, I said that a lot of these cuts are going to be easier than anticipated. You know, coming into camp, you know, you, you started hearing a lot about a lot of different guys who can do, um, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever. A lot of guys that were turning heads and, uh, you know, it's all just fodder now, right? It's, it, it, none of it materialized in anything. Um, you know, you have to set yourself apart, you know, in camp and you have to use all of any any reps you get in the in, in the preseason, any reps you get at training camp, you have to use those reps to set yourself apart, um, especially for a team that is so talented like the Chargers. Uh, you know, there was already, um, you know, just a set amount of guys who you know were making the roster. So, you know, the final roster spots, maybe, you know, maybe there was two, maybe three, whatever. But for the most part, this uh, roster, this 53-man roster was pretty much set in stone. So we knew that coming into it. But I think the one cut that everybody is kind of, you know, still talking about, Michael Bandy, um, you know, Michael Vandy was he was waived by the Chargers and uh, he was a guy I was rooting for. Um, and, you know, initially uh, when I heard the news, I, I was kind of like, oh, you know, this this kind of messed up. But as I, you know, actually sat down and thought about it, um, you know, took my my uh, uh, emotionalism out of it. Right. I, I took my pom poms off for a second just because I was rooting for the guy so hard. Um, it does make sense. It does make sense why Michael Bandy would um, be, you know, released by the Chargers. Um, now, before, you know, anything happens, right, he could potentially go unclaimed. Uh, you know, it was a waiver that, that the Chargers uh, put in on most of these guys, uh, you know, so he was waived. So there's another team that can claim him. Um, you know, if there's any team out there who's interested in him, you know, I know he, uh, you know, he turned a lot of heads in the preseason. He, he did a lot of work in the preseason. He was pretty good. Um, so it wouldn't be surprising if he did get uh, claimed by another team, but uh, he, you know, he also could come back to the Chargers as a guy on a on the practice squad. Um, I think that's that's not likely, but it is a possibility. Um, but when you look at it from the standpoint of how many receivers are on this roster, there's five receivers um, on the roster, uh, and to me, it makes the most sense just because you, if you if you're going to carry a six receiver, that six receiver needs to be able to contribute on special teams obviously um and that guy has to be able to play inside and outside and those are the two things that michael bandy did not do um as much as he has improved he's improved from you know last year in the preseason um you know he's a guy he's really really improved at his craft uh, especially that slot position he he's gotten uh, a lot more comfortable in that position and and you know it was obvious in the preseason but you know he's a guy he is very small, right? His stature is small, and that's something that he can't help. Um, but his value on special teams is a uh, returner or nothing, just because he's so small. Um, you know, he cannot be, he cannot line up and be one of the guys that's blocking on a kick return. He's too small for that. Um, you know, he either has to re be a returner or he has no special teams value at all. And, you know, I, he did get some work in at returner. Um, but, you know, it, it really wasn't anything, um, you know, too special. He's not a, a straight line speed guy. So obviously he's going to have some some trouble there. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that his value was really in special teams. Um, and again, you know, because of his his height um, and even weight, right, just him being a small guy, he does not match up well on the outside. Right. He's a guy he learned the the uh, slot position really well. 
but uh, he just has no value on the outside. You know, you go out there on the outside, you have bigger cornerbacks. Um, you have guys who are going to come in and, you know, put that man coverage on you, put that press coverage on you and really make it, you know, difficult for you to get off the line um, and to be able to get into your routes. So he does not offer any value at that you know, position, the, the, the X position on the outside, you know, he is pretty much just a slot receiver, right? The Z position. That's pretty much what he is. Now, again, he has improved vastly at it and he's gotten very, very good at it. And I think he, he has, he's on the upward swing in his NFL career, right? If he does catch on with the team, I think he can put up some numbers. I think he can do some good stuff, but just for this team right now, this iteration of the chargers, the 2022, um, Los Angeles chargers, I, he, he didn't offer any value outside of just being the slot receiver. And again, it sucks because, you know, this is a guy you, you see his story, you know, you, um, he's just an easy guy to root for. Right. And you know, you, you, you want him to be able to crack that, that 53, but if he's not in the game, you know, playing the slot receiver position, uh, he doesn't really offer much value to the 53-man roster. Now, he can offer a bunch of value um, on, on the practice squad, and he used his practice squad reps last year to get better, you know, as as a, um, a, a slot receiver. But, you know, that's that's pretty much all he offers at this point right now. Um, you know, I, th I think he still has some work to do, uh, you know, for him to be a, a, a everyday NFL player, right, a 53-man uh, roster guy. He still has some work to do, but – um, you know, again, it, 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 it's a guy you're rooting for. It, it kind of sucks, you know, when, when you hear the news that he's getting cut, but it is what it is, right? This is the nature of the beast. It, it, this is just what, what happens. Um, now I do think that again, he could get signed by another team, right? Uh, excuse me, not signed, but, um, you know, his, his contract can be claimed by another team. But, um, again, you know, hopefully he is a practice squad guy and hopefully, uh, you know, he can come back. And because if he is a practice squad guy, he can give the Chargers uh, defense, you know, he can give the, the, the defense throughout the week, you know, weeks of preparation. He can give them a good look at a, you know, inside receiver, right, who does a lot of things, who's able to run routes, um, you know, who's able to, you know, kind of read defenses, know where to sit. In, in, in zone coverages and things like that. He's a guy that can give the defense some good look. So I would like to have him back on the practice squad. And, uh, you know, if there's any injuries, you know, throughout the season, any attrition, he's a guy, you know, you can definitely suit him up on game day. And, uh, you know, he can get some reps in too at, in, in on game day, you know, and he's a guy that, who could get open, you know, catch some passes and things like that. But, um, you know, it just sucks when you're when you're rooting for a guy, you know, personally, and you 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 see a guy's story and you want him to make the team, but you know this this is just what happens um, in the NFL. But um, you know, I I think another another thing too that is is something to, to kind of go over as far as wide receivers go. The the wide receiver free agent pool is um it well it it already is. Uh, you know, pretty much loaded, but it got even more loaded today. You know, you see the Bucks; they released uh, Tyler Johnson. Um, he's another guy who is, you know, primarily a inside slot receiver. Um, you know, he did play some on the outside a little bit, uh, I believe, last year. Um, but you know, he he's a guy. He's like, you know, a, a better version of Michael Bandy. He the he just got released from the Bucks. Um, Odell Beckham is still out there. Um, there's a couple other guys, a couple other receivers who have uh, been released um, from from teams who, you know, have put up pretty good numbers in the NFL, who have had some success in the NFL um, and who had really good preseasons as well, too. So, you know, if injury and attrition does hit the Chargers, right, and if there is a need to go out and sign a guy, um, the Chargers are going to be able to pull from a pretty talented pool of uh, wide receivers, um, you know, who are unemployed. And I think that is another reason why you don't keep the six receiver on the roster at this point right now because if you keep a six receiver then you're going to have to take away from you know a defensive lineman you know you're going to have to you know take away from a, a linebacking uh, a position you're gonna have to take away maybe from a secondary spot so there is you know going to be some talent out there at the wide receiver position all season long um so if you know, there was an emergency, right? You know, you knock on wood and, and hope none of that stuff happens. But if there was an emergency, um, there is more than enough wide receiver talent out there uh, for the Chargers to be able to uh, poach from if need be. But I think that's another reason why 
um, you see Michael Bandy got got released. You know, just a, just a plethora of reasons. Um, you know, some that he can help, some that he can't. But you know, again, it it is what it is, right? And uh, you know, hopefully, you know, he is um, a guy. Like I said, hopefully he's back on the practice squad. But if not, you know, you wish him wish him well in his NFL career. I don't think his NFL career is over um, by any stretch. I think he's a guy that can you know crack a fifty three. Um, if, if, if not this year, you know, possibly next year, but, um, I think his journey is far from over. So, you know, just good luck to him and, uh, you know, hopefully he catches on with the team, um, and, uh, hopefully he has some success, but that's pretty much all I got for this video, guys. Um, I will be back with much more content, uh, later today. Um, I'm going to be going over, uh, several other names. I'm not going to get to everybody because just like I said, there wasn't too many surprise cuts, but there are some guys that I want to, you know, kind of, you know, talk about as far as what their, you know, position in the NFL could be, you know, with another team, possibly back with the Chargers, whatever. So I just kind of just wanted to go over that. But um, thank you guys for all the support. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up on the way out. And uh, again, I'll see you guys later. Uh, thank you guys for all the support. Until next time.